Recently, I was feeling pretty smart, because my video about Linux commands was getting lots of views on YouTube.com. But then, I started to get a bit arrogant, and I thought that I could do anything on the command line. So when my boss asked me to create a wholesome welcome message that would display on the terminal of new employees, I said, that's easy. And naturally, I used the printf command. But then, a junior employee suggested to me that I should use the fully qualified path name of the printf executable. Of course, I just laughed at him and said, it's the same thing. But it turns out that it's not the same thing. And the resulting wholesome welcome message was ruined due to formatting errors. In this video, I'm going to talk about a feature of common command line utilities that can cause unexpected problems if you're not aware of it. And that is the difference between built-in shell commands and standalone executables. So let's take a closer look at the example from the intro. So here I've got a printf command that's printing a bunch of text, and you can see in the output that spaces are being escaped. And if I run the second command, it is explicitly specifying the full path to the printf executable. And in the output from this command, you can see that the spaces are not escaped. And here I've just simplified these examples to make it a bit more readable. And again, you can clearly see the difference in the output. So the question is, what's going on here? Most experienced Linux users probably know that commands get resolved to an absolute path based on the current value of the path variable. So they would probably think to use the which command to look up the location of the printf executable like this. But clearly, this outputs the same value used up here. And so you might be misled into thinking that this printf command is indeed being resolved to the user bin printf version. But that's not the case. In fact, it's actually using the built-in shell version. This can be very confusing because when a command isn't doing what you expect, you'd probably consult the help documentation. However, in this case, the man page isn't the right documentation at all. In reality, we are actually dealing with the printf command that's built right into the shell. In this case, you'd need to look at the documentation for the printf command that's found in the man page for your shell. In my case, the bash shell. In the bash shell, you can also find similar documentation for built-in commands using the help command. So, if we're dealing with the built-in printf command, why did the which command give us a reference to the standalone executable instead of telling us that it's a built-in command? This is because the which command only takes into consideration the way that a command would be resolved in relation to the current path variable. And furthermore, it doesn't consider built-in commands. For this application, you could use the type command in the bash shell. And here, you can see the statement indicating that printf is first considered as a shell built-in. Now, this is a somewhat contrived example, but another example that you may have actually run into in the past is with the time command. If you run the time command like this with the dash V flag, you'll see all kinds of interesting stats. And if you ever tried to remove the full path, or maybe you were trying to run the command from memory and did something like this, you'll see that it doesn't give the expected result. For some reason, it says dash V command not found. It also doesn't have interesting stats and it didn't seem to actually run the program. Now, you can do a check with type dash A to figure out what's going on. And there you have it. Time is a shell keyword. This explains the difference we observed. You can further verify this difference by trying to run both versions of time with the version flag. The behavior that we've seen here is true for a large number of commonly used commands. For example, in any of these ones. In the bash shell, you can run the compgen command with the dash bk flag to list them. Another way of checking what a given command is, is the command command when used with the dash capital V flag. You can also check to see if a given term is a shell keyword or an alias for another command. Using this knowledge, you should now have a much deeper understanding of what's actually going on in your shell scripts. And hopefully, you can use this newfound knowledge to produce well-formatted and heartwarming welcome messages for your new employees.